Well, look at that. I'm live. Okay, so my name's Cody Engdahl, and this is my channel. And I'm experimenting with something. In fact, I will probably, not to be like the uh, felt cute, probably delete later kind of person, but I'm a big fan of social media marketing. And I've been watching a lot of things of what people do on Facebook and on Instagram and on LinkedIn and right here on YouTube. And the funny thing is, when I first got started in social media, I was actually, uh, I, my YouTube channel was actually where I spent most of my time. Uh, this was probably in the mid to late 2000s. I was living in Florida, and at the time, I was very much into uh, playing guitar, and so I spent a lot of time making videos about. Uh, I was, make, you know, playing songs and singing. I wasn't writing uh, too many things. I was. I never thought of myself. It's funny. I wanted to be a, a composer at one point in my life, uh, but not a songwriter. So I wrote. Uh, so I, I would play a lot of tunes and sing and. And I had some, I had quite a few followers and I, and, and I had a lot of views, especially on, let me get my water, it's right over here. Uh, I got a lot of views, especially on some of the, I, I did a whole series of videos where I worked on, you know, just that, um, where I worked on, uh, I have a Telecaster, it's a Mexican made Telecaster, Fender Telecaster, and I spent a lot of time upgrading in, a, you know, that was the plan, I bought a, I bought a, the very lowest level you can get with the name Fender on it, Telecaster, made in Mexico, great guitar the way it was. But I wouldn't do this to an American-made one. But I got a Mexican Tele, and I started changing things. I changed the pickups and the and the neck and all sorts of stuff. And those those videos got tens of thousands of views. And so, but then somewhere along the line, I got away from that, and I got into Facebook. And I built up a following on that. I got about uh, almost 2,000 uh, friends on Facebook right now, which is where I do most of my social media marketing. And by the way, the reason why I do social media marketing, in case you didn't know, is that I'm an author, a fledgling one. I wrote my uh, first book. I published it last year. Actually, I've, well, I've, I had a small, uh, a brief little book called The American Civil War Was About Slavery. Uh, that came out in 2018, and then my first novel, that first book, the slavery book, is a nonfiction book, and basically, it's an answer to the the lost cause argument. And they like, you know, they're usually pretty good people, but they're they're very proud, and they want to say that the American Civil War was about anything other than slavery, which is just ridiculous. Uh, yes, you can nuance things all day long, but if it weren't for slavery. If it weren't for slavery, uh, there'd be no civil war. So anyway, I wrote that book. That was a real brief one. It was really just an experiment to see what it would take to publish through Amazon. And it worked out pretty well. And Amazon, you have to you have to go through their quality control and they review the book and, and all that. And you can pretty much publish what you want as long as the book is clean of mistakes and that you're not plagiarizing and then it's up to you to sell it. So uh, that came out and that also has become kind of a, an experiment or I'm sorry, an advertisement for my first novel, which is rampage on the river. I'm going to show you a copy of that in a minute. Cause I got a whole box of them that uh, I have uh, for, I'm going to sell on, um, I'm doing an author talk on, week from Tuesday. So if you're in the Nashville or the middle Tennessee area, please come and check out my talk. We'll talk more about that, but uh, put that in your calendar now. Uh, so anyway, I did that. And in, in it, it's an advertisement because the book is serious and it, and it makes the, the, the point and the argument and backs it up with actual quotes from the time that the war started because the war was because slavery. No, the, the, the Confederate states that withdrew from the Union did so because a known abolitionist, Abraham Lincoln, ascended to the presidency, and they wanted to get out before he did anything to stop slavery. Of course, Abraham wasn't 
in the mind of immediately getting into office and ending slavery. He wanted to do a gradual compensated emancipation, meaning that over time, slavery would die out and that they would actually pay people for their losses because a slave at the time was worth tens of thousands of dollars in today's money. So it wasn't a cheap thing. And, and first of all, slavery is wrong, always wrong, always will be. Uh, but if you think about the, the point of view from the South, they, they had built their economy and their social structure based on slavery. So that meant two things. First of all, if you took away slavery, it's like telling all of your modern farmers that we're going to take away all your tractors. We're going to, we'll take away all your tractors. We're going to take away all your, your machinery. And you're going to have to figure out how, how to do this without those things. And so it, was, uh, it would have been devastating financially, even though it was something that most definitely had to be done. So I wrote that book. Uh, and I don't know what I was going with that. <laughs> That's the experiment here. I wanted to see if I could live stream and, and keep it going. So what I want to do right now or with this video is just kind of give you an update of what's going on. And hey, check it out. You like my background? I've got a light switch right here. So we can special effects. So anyway, here's where we are right now. Like I said, if you don't know me already, if you – subscribed to my channel years ago because I was doing guitar stuff and I still play guitar. I was playing guitar today. Uh, or even if you were subscribing to my channel when I was a reporter and I was putting up things uh, from, from my television reports. Um, and you're like, what is this guy doing now? Well, I'm writing books. Uh, so here's where we are. So the first book I put out was, uh, like I said, Civil, the American Civil War was about slavery. That was a nonfiction book. It's very short. It's only like 30 pages. It's mostly just quotes. Uh, that's out. That's a, a 99 cents on Amazon if you get the Kindle version. If you want a hard copy, which a lot of – I'm surprised how many people do. I've sold quite a few in the U.K., which I think is really interesting to me. Uh, I think it's 416. And the reason why is that – I wanted to keep the price as low as possible because, A, uh, I mean, I, I stand by the book. I think it's a quality product, especially for the price. Um, I wanted it to be because so many people want to gaslight. You say, oh, no, it wasn't about slavery. It was about states' rights or it was about tariffs or preserving the southern way of life. And let me tell you something. I know you can tell from my voice that I am a Yankee. I'm from Detroit. Uh, I love the South, man. I do. I love the South. I I don't agree with what the Confederacy stood for, but I felt like there's a lot of really good people back then who got caught up in it and may have been on the wrong side, but it doesn't mean that they weren't brave and noble people. Uh, but once again, disclaimer, slavery is always wrong, and I will always be against it. Uh, so that book came out in 2018, uh, and then in March – was it March? March 19th of 2019, I put out my first book, uh, my first novel, and that novel is called um, <laughs> Rampage on the River, The Battle for Island Number 10, and that is part of a series that I'm writing. These are historical fiction, uh, and the series is called the, the Civil War. I'm sorry. It's called The Second Michigan Cavalry Chronicles. Uh, I write such uh, such difficult titles to to remember to say, but basically it is historical fiction, meaning that all the history in that book and in that whole series, all of that is real history, real history, uh, researched, um, checked, cross referenced. All the historical aspects of that book are absolutely one hundred percent real. Uh, but my fictional story, of course, is my own invention. In fact, in, in it are a lot of real historical people, and, and I use a lot of quotes that uh, that are attributed to them, but I also have them have fictional conversations as well, and my fictional characters interact with them. Uh, so that book came out in March 19th, and then I started writing my second novel, which is this right here, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. Uh, it's going to be a lot thicker. I mean, if you think about this, uh, each one of these pages is about 
uh, actually two to three pages in a novel, and these are double sided. So I think the first book was first novel was 317, 317 pages. It was 55,000 words. This one is just shy of 70,000. So, uh, and a few more chapters too. It's much more in depth. And I'll tell you this too. I'm very proud of my first novel, Rampage on the River. Uh, as of right now, Rampage on the River is, I believe, the greatest accomplishment of my life, uh, other than winning the love of my girlfriend, Laura Reiner. But Rampage on the River, I, I, I wanted, I, from very early on, from probably about the sixth grade, I wanted to be an author. I've had a couple uh, false starts. And I got to a point in my life where I had the opportunity to do it. And I said, you know what? If I don't do it now, it's never going to happen. So if I don't do it now, I'm going to stop talking about it and dreaming about it because it was never meant to be. Well, it was meant to be, and I did. So that that came out 2019 uh, in, in March. And I am very proud of it. It's been doing very well. And then I immediately, not to sit on my uh, Laurel started writing this book. Uh, this is the the second in the series, Second Michigan Cavalry Chronicles. This book is called the Bad, uh, the Perils of Perryville, and the first book starts with uh, from in Detroit and takes the Michigan Second from Detroit all the way up to the Battle of Isle Number Ten. This book here starts basically where the last book left off at the at the aftermath of Battle of Island Island Number Ten. And it goes all the way up to Perryville. And during that time, we also get into Shiloh. We get into the fall of New Orleans, the Battle of Memphis, the Siege of Corinth, and a whole lot more. Uh, what I have in my hand here is this is a um, this is a manuscript. And uh, Laura, my girlfriend, like once I once I finish writing. I have a whole system what I do. So like every time I sit down and write, I reread the last session, fix anything that needs to be fixed, and then I write more. And then when I finish a chapter, I reread that and fix anything that needs to be fixed. And then when I finish the book, I, I read through it. And I read it out loud because it's easier to hear and catch mistakes if you read it out loud. And plus you can see if your sentences make sense, if they flow together or if they sound awkward. So after two passes of reading it out loud myself, I uh, hand it off to my girlfriend, Laura, and she takes it and, you know, takes the, takes the red pen. It, it may be red. I, I, I think that's actually not a red pen, but she takes a pen to it. And, uh, and, and, finds mistakes or anything that might be questionable uh, I might or things that are not consistent to the novel like if I spell something one way I got to stay with it that kind of stuff she does a great job because she's a very much a details oriented person so here I have it now I uh, I have she's done with it so now it's all on me I have to uh, go back through and uh, find all the mistakes that she found and then fix them in the manuscript uh, I'm going to send it to my mom after that uh, to have her look through it one more time. And then I am going to read through it one more time. And then we're going to send it off to the publisher. And hopefully uh, we're going to have it out. I, mean, I keep moving the date back. You know, I originally thought maybe I'd have it done in October. No. Uh, then, then before Christmas? No. Uh, then on New Year's Day? No. Uh, I wanted to have it done by the end of this uh, this month. That was possible. Uh, excuse me. I'm going to blow my nose on live YouTube. Uh, that was possible, but uh, it, I have a, 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 an author's talk on January 28th, and it's, it's actually my second one, but I really want – I really like the idea of doing talks, and I – uh, and so I really want to knock this out of the park. I want anybody that goes to says, "Yeah, Cody Engdahl, he's a great, he's a great guest. Book him for a talk. He uh, he can really hold the room and and, and tell a lot." So, uh, and plus, I have to, you know, I, I just I've written an entire other book since I did Rampage on the River, and that's what my talk is going to be about. My first novel. So I'm working on that. I'm writing out an outline. I'm not going to read. I'm not a reader. I mean, I, I can. I've read 
teleprompter for television, but it was always better when I just shot from the hip, like I'm doing now, which might be a little bit of rambling, but once again, this is an experiment and, you know, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm thinking my birthday is February 4th. <laughs> If you want to send a card or a present. <laughs> now, my birthday is February the 4th, so I I'm hoping that I can get this out on my birthday and use kind of my birthday as a, a launching point. Because, you know, on Facebook, it'll tell everybody, you know, I've got 2,000 friends on Facebook, um, and it'll tell all of them that uh, it's my birthday. And so I, I, I will fall into their uh, their view and I'll be able to say, hey, new book is out today. Happy birthday to me. Here's my book. So there, that's that. You got to do that. Uh, I have another book uh, I'm very proud of. So I have a, a, a WordPress account, and uh, you can find me there. Uh, thankfully, my name is uh, pretty unique. There's only two other Cody Engels that I know of, uh, but there might be more. But my WordPress account is it's a blog and and sure I'll, i'm just going to tell you right now this everything i do uh, i'm marketing myself you know I'm, i mean that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to sell books man you know that's 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 what i do uh but i also enjoy it and i also feel like i'm you know i'm sincere like i really care about all my friends on facebook and, and instagram twitter linkedin uh right here i'm hoping to start building an audience here uh so, uh, but if you if you're interested in what I'm doing, what I got to say, please by all means uh, look for me on any of the social media you can think of. Uh, I'm on the, all the big ones. Uh, I haven't really gotten into uh, look at that camera. Look at that kind of romantic. That kind of romantic. Strangers in the night exchange. Okay, um, I'll put it right there though. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, friend me. I'm up. I'm allowed to have up to. Uh, 5,000 friends, and I'm nowhere near that right now. So friend me on Facebook. I don't have an author's page. I don't. I, I just don't really feel like I need that. I I just have my personal pro, pro, profile. It's public. I don't put anything on there that I, that I don't want to tell the world about. So I'm on there. That's where I, you'll probably see the most of me. Uh, I have a I have a group called Engdahl House Engdahl's House of Engdahl House of Readers and Writers. It's a place where I like to not only promote myself, but other other writers and just suggestions. You know, I see a book that looks interesting. I might not read it, but I'll, I'll post it on there. So if you're looking for something to read, maybe you're not even interested in what I got to write. Uh, you can you can find stuff there. I uh, I also have a band, the Inglewood Old Time String Band. If you didn't know, I'm a fiddle player amongst other music. Uh, musical instruments but i probably find my home there with the uh with the fiddle that's definitely where i um uh definitely my home instrument now it's it's the only instrument that i require myself to practice every single day and i keep a log and i'm very active in in, in trying to progress and get better with that there's a bunch of other instruments i play that are more like bicycles for me meaning that I don't actively work on them. I don't actively practice them, uh, but I pick them up and I tool around with them. Uh, mostly the guitar, uh, you know, the guitar, guitar is a great instrument. And I feel like almost every musician, regardless of what you, your main thing, you might be mostly a singer, a bass player, a piano player. Well, we'll talk about piano, but, uh, you know, mandolin player, banjo, but everybody should have some kind of guitar skills or piano skills. And the reason why I say that is because those two instruments are great accompanying instruments as well. And so, uh, it, you know, it's 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 hard to lead or teach a song or, or learn a song on a fiddle that you want to sing. So, like with my band, if I, I do sing a few songs, if I want to sing a tune, I will bring my guitar out because it's easier for me to like strum the chords and I'm not like, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm not one of those guys, <laughs> but I can, you know, I can play guitar. And I think everybody, if you're a musician, you should that over the piano. Now the thing is with the piano, you can't put it in the back of your car and take it somewhere. Uh, and, and the other thing is, is that like, you know, piano, it's got 88 keys and each of those keys is, you know, it's got, 
strings. Some of those have double, triple courses. So what I'm trying to say is that I can tune a guitar, but a piano needs a professional tuner. And that's like, I mean, yeah. I had a piano back in the 90s, and that cost me like $70, $80 to have it tuned. And I had it tuned maybe uh, at that time. I was I was throwing away money like crazy. I was having that piano tuned every three months. Uh, it's just not practical. It, 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 are you, and the, the other thing you can do is get a digital piano. Yeah, you can do that. But, uh, you know, once again, you got to plug it in. So what I'm trying to say is that with the piano or the guitar, you can sit down and you can, you know, play the tune and sing it and get like the, the, the chords right. Uh, but a guitar travels easier. So I spend more time on guitar. I do play piano. Uh, I'm not great at it, but I can play like, you know, basic 12 bar blues. At one point I could play blues in all keys. Uh, that was, uh, that was fun. So anyway, uh, if you want to follow me, Facebook, Twitter, here, of course, uh, you know, oh God, what do those guys say? Uh, ding the bell for notification. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, ding the <laughs> bell for notification. I, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I watch a lot of YouTubers. I, I don't, I don't own a TV. I don't like TV. I'm just not into it. Uh, I like some of those programs like you see on Netflix or HBO or, Amazon, but I only watch them when I'm with my girlfriend. If I'm by myself, I don't watch uh, narrative programs. I don't sit down and watch anything unless I'm eating. And if I'm eating, I'll just watch YouTubers because there's a, there's a few that I like. Uh, most of them are pretty controversial guys, so I won't see who they are because I don't want to get in trouble with anybody. Uh, but they're decent guys um, and gals. But anyway, they I, I've noticed, and I'm not maybe on down the road, but these guys actually make money. They actually make money off these YouTube channels. They'll get on there and they'll have like 100,000 followers and people are sending them super chats, which I guess is like money. They send them money. Uh, and plus there's uh, monetization where I, I, and I still know how to do it. I'm kind of learning. This, this is part of that experiment. And I mean, if I make money at it someday, that'd be great. But, it's, you, you know, I get a lot of advice from people, as you probably do too. You know, you get a lot of unsolicited advice, which I'm always happy to get. Some people don't like it. I like it. And people say, oh, you know, you should do this or you should do that. You know, I cook and I've done some cooking videos. You might have seen them here. And people, oh, you should have a cooking show. Well, yeah, yeah, that would be fun. But the thing is, is that you spread yourself too thin and you've got all these different things going on, you know. Uh, it's hard to satisfy all of them do a good job. And so I say that you should pick the thing that you're going to do and focus on it. Now you can have some side things. That's fine, but pick what it is that you do and that's what you do. And that's what you work on. So for me, I decided uh, I'm going to write novels. That's what I want to do. I'm writing novels and I'm selling and everything I do goes around that. Now the music I, I guess you could call me semi-professional because I, I play and sometimes I get paid to uh, play and I play in public. But I know that this, I, I, you know, especially here in Nashville, I can't compete with the real pros, man. Like, I, and I mean, never say never, but I guess it's, I, it's, I know it's too much of an uphill battle for me to like go out there and make a living as a fiddle player. Uh, and, and even if I did, I don't know if that's what I want to do. And even if I did want to do it and I was able to do it, I know people who are amazing, amazing musicians here in Nashville. And they go on tour. I mean, like they'll, they'll go to like Europe or Australia for the summer and tour and they're putting out albums. And these people are barely like putting gas in their in their cars. Um, it's, just, it's a tough life. So I decided not that, you know, writing books is, you know, very lucrative either, unless you, you know, you build. Um, and I know that, like, I, I know that with my first book, uh, I'm building, I'm not going to be a millionaire because I wrote one novel. Uh, I'm building a readership. And once I have enough, uh, you, you know, maybe, uh, my first book, Rampage on the River, I, you know, I, I sell X amount of copies 
And then some of those people like it and spread it around. And then when the next book comes out, maybe I sell even more. And as, as the books come out, I start growing the readership. And that's kind of what I'm doing here too. And by the way, I should probably advertise. So if you're interested in my books, I'm on Amazon. Right now there are three. Uh, I keep interrupting myself. I never get. So if you're just like, like, what is this guy talking about? Don't worry. I don't know either. Um, right now there's three books available online on Amazon. Just look up my name, Cody C. Engdahl. I'm the only Cody Engdahl that I know of that's writing books that has stuff. There are other Engdahls. There's a Sylvia Engdahl. Uh, there's, I think, a William Engdahl. And William Engdahl, I believe, is writing historical stuff as well. Must be a... Uh, Maybe even Sylvia too. But here's here's my offerings right now. We got Rampage on the River, which is a novel. It's an action adventure novel, but the history all in it is real. So so you read it and you're like, oh, this battle. I didn't know it was like that. It was like all the battles, all that kind of stuff is really the way I wrote it. And you can look in the back of the book. You can see. Um, uh, I have a thing called historical note. Uh, the other thing I know, I started talking about this early on. Where I got that WordPress account. And I wrote a bunch of uh, articles about how to write a novel and how to write, publish, and, and market a novel because I've done all three, you know, and, and I'm not the most successful guy in the world, but I've done it. I've done it. And so I got things that I could probably help you if you think that's what you want to do too. That book, oh, so what I did is I took those articles and I compiled them into a book, and the book is called How to Write publish and market your novel and that is right now available on amazon and once again i try to keep my stuff cheap man so like that one is 199 for the kindle version 499 for a print version uh so there's that and uh, and then there's the book about uh the civil war is about slavery so anyway let's talk about what's coming up here so uh, I already told you that the second novel, that'll be four books on Amazon when it comes out. The second novel, which is called The Perils of Perryville, that is due out as soon as I get the work done. I mean, probably within a month. Uh, and, and then I'll have four books. One of the things that's holding me up is that I got invited. This is the second time I've done a, a book talk. This is the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War Fort Donaldson Camp 62, and it's basically the the, uh, the chapter of Sons of Union veterans here in Middle Tennessee, or 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 at least in in uh, in Nashville. Ironically, my very first talk was last year, shortly after Rampage came out, and I did a talk with the Sons of Confederate veterans. And uh, that was very interesting, and I was very touched by it, man, because I'm obviously a Yankee. I had written a book that said, hey, the war was about slavery, regardless of what you want to say. Um, but they were really great, sold a bunch of books. Uh, I've, I've been friends with a lot of those guys since. So so it's interesting that my first two book, uh, book talks was Sons of Confederate Veterans and now Sons of uh, Union uh, Veterans. And so I'm putting together a talk. I'm really excited about it, and what I want – what I want to be able to do is, I, I mean, in the end, I, I'm just going to tell you, I'm very shallow. I'm a shallow person. In the end, I just want it to be entertaining. I want people to sit in those chairs and go, oh, that's really interesting, and I like how he, he presented it. So we're going to do a talk uh, about, uh, I think the talk is called uh, The Second Michigan Cavalry from Detroit to the uh, Battle of Isle Number 10. and. I'm going to go in there, uh, and I've already started my outline. You know, first of all, I'm going to tell you who I am. Uh, we're really nobody, uh, but uh, when, but I'm from Detroit, and I live here in Nashville. And when I decided to write this series, uh, you know, I, I love historical fiction, so I wanted to write. Uh, in the genre that I love, and I wanted to write a book I would want to read. And I picked Civil War because I had, you know, some familiarity with it. And not only that, but there's a wealth of resources. I mean, I basically live, uh, you know, on a Civil War battleground. I mean, there was a battle here in Nashville, which we're going to get to in the third book. 
And so I thought, okay, you know, there's 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 tons of resources and there's a built-in audience. I think the American Civil War is probably the most uh, the most popular historical event that people follow history buffs like to follow, at least here in the United States, especially here in the South. And I have found that internationally too, like uh, there are Civil War troops in in the UK, in Scandinavia, in 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 Europe. So uh, that's all like um, the, the audience is there. there and so you, I just have to reach out to them and I'm doing it. I'm slowly building this uh, readership. So anyway, uh, so I talked a little bit about that. And then uh, the Michigan second, how they, 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 they muster. They, the guys come from all over uh, south, uh, southern Michigan. And uh, they muster in Detroit, some some in other cities as well, and they all go to Fort Anderson, not the one, not the one in Georgia where they starved uh, the the federal prisoners, um, but the there's one in Grand Rapids. We'll talk a little bit about that and some interesting things, and then they they get on trains and they go uh, to the Benton Barracks in St. Louis. And Laura and I, Laura's my girlfriend, by the way, you'll, you'll hear me refer to her. And we've been together for like uh, eight or nine years. And before you even ask, uh, we just decided that, you know, at this age, at this point, we're not going to have kids. And she likes being independent and living in her own place. So we're just, you know, but she's pretty much my de facto wife. Uh, so we went there on a, on a trip out to Nebraska because I played at one of my cousin's weddings. And I saw where the Benton Barracks used to be. It's a, it's a park now, and it's and there's no markers or anything like that. But uh, it's interesting. This is where most of the Union troops came to train in the Western Theater, St. Louis, and uh, it, it had a, the grounds were about a mile long and a half mile wide. So there's plenty of room there for. Uh, practice for drilling, for uh, practicing on their horses, the cavalry stuff like that. Well, anyway, they, they go from there, and they ship down uh, down the the, uh, the river, and uh, they fight with uh, General Pope in the uh, Battle of Island Number Ten, which I th really think is one of the most important battles in the Western Theater or the Civil War. Because, okay, and I'll tell you what. So, Island Number Ten is. Basically, the, 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 uh, I'm going to see if I can do this backwards so that it makes sense to you. So if you can imagine the Mississippi River comes down from you know, Minnesota, miniature soda, as I'd say, and right where like Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, and uh, is Missouri all, all kind of uh, uh, meet along the river, the river comes down, does a 180-degree turn right where, right where Tennessee and Kentucky are. And then goes nine miles north, and it does a another 180 degree turn, and then and then comes down. And so this is really the gateway into the south and the west, like uh, because north of that is uh, uh, Kentucky, and, um, and this is how you get into the south using the Mississippi River. So the Confederates think, okay, well, uh, to come down that the the, the Federal ironclads with these big metal monsters that that could you know level a city if they wanted to. Uh, they uh, they would have to come down and do a 180 degree turn. They'd have to slow down to do that turn. And so if you put a bunch of cannons and and batteries on that island and all on the shore, it'll create a gauntlet of fire in which these ships have to come down and turn around and come back up. And so this is uh, this is basically to stop the Yankee invasion down the river. Uh, the other the other place that they're the Yankees can come in from the south is from New Orleans, from the Gulf of Mexico. And so before the Federals can come down that way, they got to get past Island Number Ten. So that's Pope's and um, and uh, and Admiral Foote. He's the guy in charge. He's got a different title than Admiral. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is that's in the book, but he's he wants to bring his ships down. So Pope's got to come around and attack uh, New Madrid, which is on the other uh, curve of the river in Island Number Ten, and clear out those Federals and those Federal guns, so that the uh, I'm sorry, the Confederate guns, 
a rebel gun so that the federals can come down and get through and, and, and get, the, I think the next place that they would have to worry about would be Fort Pillow, which is about 30 miles north of Memphis and then Memphis itself. And Memphis, the Battle of Memphis and New Orleans are in the second book which is coming out. So anyway, that's what the talk's going to be about. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, you know, you don't get paid to do talks, but you get to sell your book. So I'm going to bring, uh, unfortunately, I wanted to have Perryville done, uh, but unfortunately, I just I, I couldn't get it done fast enough. So I am bringing, ah, there we go. How's that work? Yeah, okay. I am bringing, this table's wobbly, so when I do things, I am bringing uh, novels. Uh, let's see here. We can do this. This is the Rampage on the River. And this is my sixth box of 20 that I've uh, ordered. So I, you know, that means uh, I myself, outside of, you know, people buying them on Amazon, I have uh, sold 100. Uh, some directly to people, some, uh, a lot of them through local local bookstores and museums uh, and gift shops. So in case you want one, I'm at Parnassus. I'm at the Lowe's House in Franklin. I'm at uh, the Robertson County Museum, History Museum, and I'm at Fort Negley. So here, oh, they're just so beautiful. It's just something, it's really something to see, something that you've created. So these are the books. Oh, and they did a better job. The last batch, I didn't like the cup, they, they had too much amber coloring, but this is a, yeah, that looks good. So that's my book right there, uh, Rampage on the River. Oh, it's beautiful. Gorgeous book. <laughs> Sorry, it's still like my children. So I got 20 of these. I'm going to be bringing them and signing them uh, at Fort Nagley. That's a week from uh, Tuesday. So uh, if, if you want to come and see, if you want to see me talk, uh, uh, come on down. Uh, and guess what? Maybe you already bought a book, man. Maybe you are already. <laughs> I got to come up. If I ever have fans, come up like an Engdahl head. <laughs> Or Engdalite. Um, but anyway, all, all kidding aside, if you uh, already have uh, this book or any of my books and you're like, hey, uh, I, I'd like you to sign it, man, because uh, who knows? Maybe one day uh, you'll be famous and I can sell a book for a million dollars. Bring it. I'll sign it, man. I, I, I love to do it. And also, if you do buy a book and you don't come to this and you're somewhere around in the Middle Tennessee area, I am more than happy to, uh, to meet up with you somewhere and sign it if you'd like uh, uh, if, if you'd like me to sign your book. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you're just like, no, 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 I, I don't want your sloppy handwriting on my book. I just, you know, I want a clean book. That's fine. So here we're going to wrap this up. And I'm actually pretty proud. I, it's, I've gone 37 minutes of talking. So this is kind of an experiment to myself. In fact, uh, it shows that one person is watching. I don't know if that's me or if there really is somebody watching. Uh, so if you are watching, thank you very much. Hi. Um, wrap things up. Here's the updates. Here's where we are right now. Okay. So right now I have three books. Or if you're German, I have five. <laughs> I have three books that are available, and the first one is uh, uh, I got two nonfiction and one fiction books. So the nonfiction books are the American Civil War was about slavery and how to write, publish, and market your novel. And I have uh, and I have Rampage on the River. All of those are available online on Amazon. Just look up my name, and uh, I'll, I'll try to put the uh, a link to my author's page in the comments below uh the uh the the second novel is coming out soon probably within a matter of a couple weeks uh that's gonna be the perils of perryville i'm very proud of the book i i'm proud of rampage on the river i think rampage and river is an excellent book I think Perryville, I might have done even better better job i'm very excited it's longer uh if you read Rampage and you liked it, you'll love Perryville because I feel like I there's a lot more history in it, there's a lot more action in it. Uh, we get more in depth into the characters, we spend more time, you know, like 
in the beginning, Catherine, uh, um, Kyle's sister, Catherine Bethune, uh, she's almost like the main character uh, in the beginning. And it moves around quite a bit between her and Carl and Kyle and uh, uh, Lathan, who's my bad guy, and Elijah and Liza. And we learn more about everybody's background and, and, and some secrets that, uh, that I was hiding from you in the first book. So that's coming out soon. Uh, a week from Tuesday, January 28th at Fort Negley, 6 o'clock, I'm going to be doing a author's talk. It's free and open to the public. I'll have some books available there. Uh, and also, if you want to buy a copy, a, a hard copy somewhere and not order it, they're at Parnassus. And I've heard they're at the at the at the uh, Nashville airport as well. Parnassus has a bookstore there and I'm there. And so which, I mean, I just can't even believe that. That's a huge honor for me. So there's that. Uh, I'm at the Lotes house, JT Thompson, who has been like one of the greatest friends a guy can have. JT was the very first brick and mortar place that said, Hey, we need your book in our bookshop and I need to get some down to him. I've been, waiting for the new book to come out uh, to push more books on, but very first place that carried my book. So, I mean, and, and by the way, if you're ever in Franklin or middle Tennessee, check out the loads house. Great story. Uh, it's a you know, it's German immigrant comes to America, builds a house uh, so that he can show off his carpentry carpentry skills ends up right in the middle of the battle of Franklin's great story. It's a, it's good value to go uh, for your money, take kids down there and learn some history. Uh, I'm at the um, Robertson. Is it Robertson? Also, yeah, Robertson uh, County History Museum. Uh, that's a great uh, that's a great place to check out too. Uh, very interesting history up there, uh, especially the tobacco wars, which I didn't know anything about. But apparently, uh, like in the late 19th, early 20th century. There was a lot of like gangster style like fighting going on between big clans of people that were growing tobacco out there. It got pretty bloody. So that's a really interesting story. And there's all sorts of interesting stories at that museum. Of course, Parnassus, like I said, which is a great bookstore. It's owned by an author. She believes in independent um, independent authors like me. She believes in giving little guys like me a shot. You should check her out. Give her a shot. And uh, that's my phone. I think my girlfriend's on her, on her way over or something. Uh, heading your way. Maybe we can walk. Yeah, we can do that. Um, and, uh, uh, oh, Fort Negley. Oh, Fort Negley, man. Uh, like, Fort Negley right here in Nashville. And there's a there's a bookstore there. And you can go see, like, a, a, a very well-preserved uh, fortress right here. Oh, I should let her. I should let her. Hang on a second. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. Uh, heading your way. Headed your way. Maybe we can walk. Absolutely. All right. That's Laura, my girlfriend, and my uh, my editor. Uh, we uh, we like to go for long walks. You know, like the running. Uh, you know, it's so hard on my knees and and all that. So it's, you know, so we walk like for an hour. Uh, so she's on her way over to do that. And uh, so, yeah, I think I named all the places, right? Parnassus, the Lotus House, Robertson County Museum, and Fort Negley. That's right. And then you can also get it on Amazon. And if you come to Fort Negley a week from Tuesday, I'll be there. And uh, that's it. If you got any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and like I said, I'm doing this because – I actually like to watch a lot of these independent comic book creators. They have very, mostly because they fight amongst each other and it's just full of drama. <laughs> so it's just cheap entertainment for me, but I, I like to watch that a lot. Um, and I won't say who I like to watch because I'll get probably get in trouble. Uh, but uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Even though if there is that one person who I think is probably me, uh, thank you for watching. If you watch this after I'm done with the live, thank you. I'm probably going to do more of these because I, I, I've done this and now I kind of feel, all right, I can, this is something I can do. So uh, anyway, um, I don't know when the next time I'll be live, but uh, that's it. And we'll talk to you later. And this will probably end abruptly. But, uh, you know, here's the thing. 
whether it's one of my books or someone else, keep reading. And uh, I always have a book that you're reading. And whatever it is that you're doing, like you're a musician, you're a painter, uh, whatever it is that you're into, man, don't ever give up. Just keep, you don't have to make it a living off it, but just keep doing it.